Right now our world is facing many challenges over population, climate change, scarce resources like water and food ultimately is changing the face of the planet. It's simply not sustainable the way things are going. GEO is organizing the world's earth science and earth observation community, providing a platform for data, for measurement, for sharing. Esther is a private company. We build software that is empowering hundreds of thousands of organizations all over the world to apply geographic information and geographic knowledge to real life applications. I'm very proud of our relationship with Jill because it's allowing us to, in a collaborative environment, leverage this kind of information for real action. This is what we need today, is moving beyond simply measurement and analytics to understanding and action. There are always some areas of the planet, land and ocean, where there's been a lot of attention and they've surveyed over and over again while other areas of the planet are completely unknown. And how in the world are we going to protect the Earth for all peoples if we don't understand it and don't have it mapped? GEO is asking for these uh, standardized classifications and maps of the entire world's ecological land units, ecological marine units, and eventually there'll be an ecological freshwater units. The idea, of course, is to understand and map uh, ecology and ecosystems, but also the services that they provide to humans, which is why uh, GEO and ESRI uh, get along uh, so well, along with our U.S. Geological Survey and NOAA and NASA colleagues. And we hope that these maps will be able to help us uh, understand where these ecosystems provide the greatest service, food, transportation corridors, recreation, all of the things we as humans need from the planet. So you can't just stare at a map to understand something like that. You really need digital helpers. We've prepared web services, web maps. There are story maps that tell you the entire story of the ecological land units and the ecological marine units project. You know, how the projects came to be, where the data come from, how we analyze the data, how we created the maps, and then of course uh, the maps. And then there are some fun apps that you can run on your phone or your tablet. And they're available for, for scientists who are part of GEO, but they're also available for educators, for school children. So they're available for everybody to democratize this very complex and very important scientific information. The new patterns of GIS are web-based. It's not simply one system, one individual, one team, but we can begin to interconnect these individual systems with services to create systems of systems. In this sense, the philosophy and concept of GEO, of systems of systems integration, is being replicated in local distributed GISs around the planet. Let's look at an example. A state of emergency today as Tropical Storm Colin hit the panhandle hard, dumping over seven inches of rain in Pinellas County. During the Tropical Storm Colin in 2016, we worked with our GIS team to develop a viewer. And the viewer basically um, mapped all of our work requests that came in during the storm. And it just gave us a better situation awareness. So we basically developed it on the fly and tweaked it during the storm. And then we prepped for doing the exact same thing before Hurricane Hermine hit. We look forward to continuing our collaboration, specifically with individual countries, in both the ingestion of scientific information and also its application. We can not only understand, but also convince our decision makers around the world to take those kind of corrective actions to address the issues of climate change, to address the issues of shortages in natural resources, to address the issues of making our cities more livable and sustainable. This is a very important mission for all of us.